uh, chat, okay? Let me very briefly introduce David Legland. Today, he's a uh, researcher at engineer at INRAE, former, uh, formerly known as INRAE, the French National Institute for Agricultural uh, Research. And me and him, we developed uh, already a few years ago, uh, Morpholid J, who's gonna be the main topic of uh, today's presentation. So I hope you enjoy everything. Okay, so uh, hello everyone, and thank you Ignacio for the presentation. Um, I will present you image processing with uh, Morpholid J. So um, just to present myself, uh, okay, I'm David Legrand. I'm working at uh, French Institute for Agronomy, and more precisely in a facility for uh, chemical analysis and image analysis of biological products. And to um, give first some uh, uh, historical uh, introductions, um, a few years ago, we were, I was working with Inertio in uh, an image analysis and modeling team at the uh, Institut Jean-Pierre Bourgin in uh, Versailles. And we were a team of uh, computer scientists developing uh, methods and algorithms for image, uh, image processing and analysis. We made a huge, a huge use of uh, mathematical morphology uh, field of image analysis and to facilitate the interaction with our uh, biology, biologist colleagues we started to uh, translate the algorithms into uh, plugins and uh, libraries for the image Fiji platform. And uh, this is uh, the origin of the MorphoLidJ software. So uh, more precisely, what is mathematical morphology? It's um, an approach for image analysis, which is based on uh, that theory. It was developed uh, around 50 years ago by uh, Georges Matron and uh, Jean Serra in uh, Ecole des Mines de Fontainebleau. And the good point of this uh, approach is that it is uh, very generic in the sense it works for 2D or 3D images or even uh, larger dimensions. Uh, it works for binary or gray level images. And it may even be uh, applied to other data structures such as, such as graphs or uh, meshes, for example. There are many operators that comes from uh, mathematical morphology, including the skeleton, the watershed, or more gener generally, uh, morphological filters. Um, I put you two uh, references, two books, uh, that covers most of the topics from uh, image uh, processing with morphology. J. Um, they are not so easy to, so the first one is not so easy to find, the second one is more recent and so easy to, to at least to buy. Uh, the problem is that they are a little bit technical and uh, not so easy to apply in daily life. And this is also one of the reasons we started developing MorphoLFJ. So um, MorphoLFJ is a collection of plugins for ImageJ. Uh, a lot of them have um, a graphical user interface to facilitate both the setting of the parameters and also to have a quick feedback on the effect of the different parameters. Um, the, the main page uh, for the morphology is uh, imagej.net. So there is a, a page about morphology. You may also find some uh, user manual on the GitHub page for morphology. And also as well on GitHub, as I have put some um, additional data and some uh, plugins that we use during this session uh, that you can find on, uh, on this following link. I will try to show them directly. Yes, on uh, daily grant and mathematical morphology with MorphoLidJ. So this is a GitHub uh, account. You have some plugins additional to MorphoLidJ. You have the sample images I will, use, I will use during this session. There are some uh, icons in the bottom. And also the slides can be found in this, uh, in this repository. OK. Uh, all right, so what I will present you today is um, the, the global concept of mathematical morphology, about three uh, parts of the typical image processing um, workflow. I will start with a session about uh, enhancement and filtering of images. And the second part, I will, I will speak about segmentation mostly using watershed. And I will um, um, present some analysis 
some image analysis using um, MorphoLJ in the, in the soft part. Okay, let's start. Let's start. I will first um, recall some basic definitions. Um, something I like to recall is that uh, in the beginning, the mathematical morphology was defined as a way to describe the shapes and uh, of the object. So um, the way to do it was to use uh, a virtual probe called a structuring element. And um, by changing the position of the probe uh, relatively to the, to the shape to under study, uh, um, depending on different uh, uh, binary operation with the set, we could get a result and create a resulting shape. So uh, the first operation is uh, erosion. And uh, the operation associated to erosion is, uh, does the structuring element is totally contained within the set. And uh, the position for which the structuring element is totally inside of the set will result in a new shape that corresponds to the result of the erosion. This new shape is smaller than the uh, original shape. And the components of the original sets that are smaller than the structuring element disappear. Then the dual operation of the uh, erosion is a deletion. Um, in this case, the operation is does the structuring, structuring element touches set. And the result is another shape which is thicker and larger than the original set. And uh, the result of deletion um, makes some connected, some components be connected and some holes within the, the, the structures disappear. So this, um, one problems of erosion and deletion is that they strongly uh, change, change the shape of the original set. So they are uh, often used together and um, in combinations. And for example, the opening is a result of an erosion followed by, by a deletion. It will remove the small object, but the objects larger than the stru structuring element will keep their original shape. And the closing, morphological closings is defined by a deletion followed by an erosion. This will remove the small holes within the, the structure. Uh, it will connect some uh, components that may be separated. And uh, the resulting shape will be closer to the original shape than with a del deletion. OK. The um, morphological closing and opening are very uh, useful for uh, post-processing of uh, segmentation results. When we have a lot of uh, small uh, particles that correspond to, to noise that was uh, segmented. And uh, in this case, this is an image of uh, plant tissue, some maze stem that was observed with the macroscopy. And a raw segmentation using a uh, simple threshold results in a lot of uh, black and white noise. So using uh, morphological closing uh, results in consolidating the structures we want to keep. And from this image in the bottom, applying a morphological opening will remove the small uh, dirts and uh, results in uh, an image that is more uh, clean and easier to analyze in a second part. OK, so um, morphological operations also can also operate on grayscale images. And in that case, the interpretation of erosion and uh, deletion uh, can be understood as uh, applying, uh, as computing the minimum value or the maximum value of the pixels uh, within a neighborhood defined by the structuring element. This results in, uh, in increasing the area occupied by bright pixels in the case of deletions, and uh, increasing the area of, uh, occupied by dark regions in the case of an erosion. And also, uh, applying uh, morphological closing or opening will result in filtering the image, in removing um, the bright areas or the dark areas that whose size is smaller than the structuring element. So there may be also a Morphological closing and opening are also very useful for uh, filtering uh, images to remove speckle noise. David, 
yes. sorry. Would it be possible to activate your um, your arrow, your pointer, so we can see where you are? Really? Oh, okay. Now I see it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Try. Do you see it? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. And our okay. Okay. So erosion, deletion, opening and closing as a basics of the morphological filters. Uh, we can go a little bit further. And for example, the, um, use the result of an opening with the original uh, image to uh, improve, to enhance some structures within the image. So when using a large structuring element and applying an opening, uh, the result uh, in this image will remove all the bright structures that are smaller than the structuring element. Then here we will uh, make disappear the, uh, all the grains with, uh, within the image. And the remaining image will correspond to an estimate of the background. Then computing the uh, difference between the original image and the result of opening will uh, improve, will enhance. Uh, so the difference will uh, correspond to the image of the, um, of, of the grains and it will remove some uh, variations of gray levels we can observe within this image. So it's a little bit darker in the bottom part uh, and brighter in the middle part. And this effect disappears in the result of the top part. Uh, for the for people who know the rolling ball algorithm in image eight, a very similar algorithm. The only difference is, is in the way we estimate the background image. And uh, there is also a dual operation, the black top hat that corresponds in an enhancement of the um, uh, uh, dark structures whose size is smaller than the structuring element. So an example of um, white top hat application of an image of uh, leaf. So if we want to uh, keep uh, enhance the, um, the network of the veins, within the leaf, uh, we can apply a white top hat with a small structuring element. So just a little bit larger than the size of the leaves. And uh, the result of the top hat uh, in, uh, enhance the, the network of the veins. Um, another use of morphological filters is uh, to obtain um, um, to, to, to extract the gradients or the boundaries of the structure within the image. So combining a deletion with an erosion will result in a morphological gradients uh, that can be used in uh, subsequent filters. Um, also, there is an equivalent of the Laplacian um, obtained by combining erosion, deletion, deletion, and the original image. And that uh, can be useful to uh, detect spots white, uh, black or white spots within the image. Okay, until now, um, I didn't uh, care about the, the shape of the structuring element. And very often we use either a square structuring element or a disk structuring element to better preserve the, the shape of the original object. But it is possible to uh, make it vary and to focus specifically on um, structures with um, different orientations. So by using uh, linear structuring elements, so line segments with a specific orientations and applying uh, different morphological filters, we can uh, specifically select the features, so the pixels in an image that uh, correspond to a specific orientation within the image. So here is an example with horizontal structuring elements vertical one, and by combining the result of different orientations, it's possible to obtain a directional filtering that will uh, increase uh, the quality of the structures uh, that are curvilinear, and that will remove the um, signal of the um, pixels that correspond to single dots within the image. And OK. Can exemplify this with a small demonstration. I will put screen. Hmm. 
OK. Um, I will show it now with uh, a live demonstration using image J, using uh, the image of props. Come back here. OK. Um, OK. And to demonstrate it more, OK. In uh, one of the additional plugins uh, that you can find on the, um, on the GitHub account for this uh, session, there is a directional filter one that consists in choosing the uh, operation and, uh, and the features of the line structuring element, the length and the thickness. And depending on the orientation you choose, uh, the result will uh, increase the quality of the signal uh, for the different orientations. Uh, in uh, the original MorphologyJ library, there is the directional filtering plugin that consists in uh, choosing the same features, but also combining all the results. And here, by combining the maximum value over a set of directions, we uh, increase the quality of uh, curvilinear circuit. Um, okay, so yeah, it should be. So here is a result of um, directional filtering on original image. Uh, this is the same that um, you can find uh, on the slide. Okay. Uh, it's possible to go a little bit um, more. Um, deeply into the directional filtering. And an interesting application of this kind of filtering is it, it may be possible to separate uh, curvilinear structures that intersect on the image. So here, um, I have a demonstration on a synthetic image that uh, correspond to small curves that cross each other. And um, um, Using another plugin um, that creates the, um, the 3D image um, in which each slice corresponds to the response of a specific orientation. And let's go for different settings. OK, I sometimes to compute. And OK, um, in the resulting image, uh, we'll have the same kind of result. But um, as it is a 3D image, uh, so each plane of the 3D stack corresponds to a specific orientation. And here, uh, we can um, separate. So if we uh, visualize in 3D dimension, it will be easier. Uh, we have transformed uh, original structures that were intersecting into 3D structures that are now disconnected. And um, OK, from this image, uh, it is also possible to um, uh, compute the regions associated to each individual image and to uh, compute, uh, to apply connected component algorithms that will um, Results in a label image corresponding to the different um, to the different fibers. Okay, so now we have the different values uh, within uh, the 3D image. We have the value correspond to the index of the of the fibers. Uh, we can apply colorization to this 3D image. Okay, seems to work. And to visualize in 3D to have better um, representation. All right. 
okay now we can separate uh, particles even if they intersect okay let's continue and to uh, finish about the, the morphological filters another family of uh, interesting uh, filters is the attribute opening uh, um, using morphological filters uh, use uses uh, structuring elements can be disk square uh, or line segment as we have seen but sometimes we want to um, be more generic and uh, do not care about the, the shape of the structuring element but simply consider uh, connected regions um, uh, to, 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 to think about the size of the structuring element but not about its shape so this is a principle of attribute opening the idea is to consider regions within the original image of our connected pixels and um, you know the, the algorithm will retain only the regions uh, whose number of pixels is uh, larger than the specified threshold so here by applying a, an attribute opening um, I will use the pointer yes so here an original image here the result of uh, classical opening with a, a small disk as structuring element but the, um, there are many veins small veins that disappear uh, as so the goal is to make disappear the small white dots within the leaf here we make disappear the white dots but also the small leaves and using attribute opening we can keep uh, the network of the leaves of the veins and uh, remove the images of the small dots so in some cases the attribute opening may be a nice alternative to a classical morphological filtering okay to, um, that was uh, classical morphological filtering uh, the problem of such filters is that usually when we apply a morphological filtering we uh, distort and we change the shape of the original structure within the image and here we apply a um, morphological opening we make disappear small items but we also uh, change the shape of the large items that retain that retain what we want is also to keep the original shape of the remaining items so for this we use uh, morphological reconstructions the principle is to, um, to to work with two images. One is a marker image, in black in this image, and uh, we will apply deletion to this black image. But at each step of deletion, we will also compute the intersection with the original image that is uh, used as a mask to uh, constrain the deletions. Then, by iterating the deletions, constrained to the mask. Um, the reconstruction uh, um, gradually reconstructs the original structures and at the end what we obtain is simply the, um, the, the particles that were containing a part, portion of the mask okay um, it's possible to display it using a small demonstration I will open two images, one corresponding to uh, the image of particles that you have shown. So here, particles are in white and the background is in dark, and two marker images. Okay. We have to choose the marker images here the mask image as a uh, particles image and here the result is a 3d image that um, correspond to the different steps of the reconstruction okay. so this is uh, the demonstration to uh, illustrate the principle in practice in MorphoLabJ um, the plugin to use is uh, morphological reconstructions uh, it gives directly the results 
and also uses a faster algorithms that doesn't um, that is faster that in, than iterating the different the deletions. And also works for um, grayscale images. So in some cases, it may be so interesting to apply the reconstruction to the grayscale image. Um, yes, and there was also another demonstration for this. Um, let's suppose we have an image of different bright objects, grains image, and we want to uh, select only a specific uh, subset of these grains. Um, so we can use a grayscale morphological reconstruction on this image. So for this, we first need to create a marker image. We have to make it the same size as the original image. Um, and then on the original image, we will use the multipoint selection tool click on different grains, uh, the ones we want to, to keep in the final image with some different groups, okay? And then we need to uh, propagate the selection here. Selection, restore selection, draw the selection. Okay. Um, and then we apply the morphological reconstruction. The marker image is the, uh, this one. The uh, mask image is the grains image. And the result is uh, the isolation of the uh, selected grains in the original image. OK, last thing about morphological reconstruction is uh, that it is used internally in many other algorithms. So typically, uh, the kill borders algorithms uh, is based on the morphological reconstruction. And uh, filling the holes in the binary or in the grayscale image also implies using a morphological reconstruction. So this is maybe an algorithm you have already used, even if you didn't notice it. Okay, so to summarize on morphological filters, um, there are useful uh, family of filters, uh, either for the post processing of binary images or for improving the quality of uh, original grayscale images. In some cases, it is possible to uh, play with the shape of the structuring element to improve some specific uh, structures like curvilinear structures or Another improvement is to use attribute opening. In that case, we consider only the size of the connected components around the, the pixel. And uh, in the second step, the morphological reconstruction can greatly help improve the quality of the uh, segmentation by uh, selecting objects and then reconstructing the object, the sh original shape of the object that was selected. Uh, yes, this is a the end of the first section. So maybe there are time for a few questions. Yeah, there are questions for you. Okay. So one that is, people keep asking us is if the uh, directional filtering works in 3D as well. Yes, it works. Um, the difficulty is uh, we need to, so it is not implemented morphology in 3D, but it is possible to implement it in 3D as well. Uh, it is a little bit more complicated because in 2D, it's easy to define a, a set of orientations. In 3D, we have to distribute the orientation of the line structuring element uh, depending on azimuth and elevation. It's a little bit more complicated. And also in 3D, we can focus either on uh, line structuring element or either on uh, oriented disk structuring element. In that case, it would be more useful to uh, improve the quality of uh, uh, 3D membranes. So in, this, in summary, it doesn't work in, uh, in, in 3D no. in morphology, <laughs> but it is technologically possible. Okay. Technologically possible, but it is not implemented in morphology at the moment. Okay, there's another question a little bit related to that. They say if it is possible to determine 
the spatial coordinate of the surfaces that are created with the directional filter yeah, in 3D, but I guess if we just say that the, we cannot get this in 3D, it doesn't make uh, sense, right? Or is there any way that we they can get the surface of the resulting object uh, as, or the coordinates of the surface uh, through morphology? Um... Yes, so uh, once we have uh, isolated uh, objects or regions within the image, there are also analysis tools and in which we can extract the coordinates of the objects. Uh, usually what we do is we extract the centroid. And so I can present a little bit more in the analysis section, if this is the question, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I think we're, we're good to follow. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now I will introduce um, morphology. Uh, yes, morphological segmentation based on uh, watershed. And yeah, uh, segmentation is uh, the process of uh, identifying the structures of interest within uh, an image. And typically, um, the result can be can have different forms. It can be a binary image in which the result have other uh, true or false um, value. It can be a label image in which the value of the pixel corresponds to the intent, to the index of the region it belongs to. Or it can be a um, geometrical uh, primitive such as uh, a polygon or a collection of points. So the basic example of uh, segmentation algorithm is the threshold that consists in uh, simply keeping all the pixels whose values is higher than the given value. Okay. Um, the watershed uh, algorithm, so uh, yes, the watershed algorithm consists in um, considering that the intensities within the image correspond to an altitude. And uh, the goal is to identify the position of the valleys of the basins with it. So the dark regions within the image. Uh, another view can be, we want to extract the position of the crest of the, the, the crest between the valleys. So the two results are complementary. The result is, so the, the principle of the algorithm is a flooding process. So we start from um, the, the local minima within the image and start filling this, the corresponding regions until uh, two adjacent regions um, will merge. Um, at the boundary between these two regions, we start building a dam, so uh, giving a specific value to the pixels or the voxels in between, and continue the flooding process until the altitude reaches uh, the, the maximum value within the image. Um, actually, when we apply uh, watershed algorithms directly on the grayscale image, the result is something like, like this. So there are a large number of uh, small regions, and uh, that doesn't really correspond to what we, we expect. Uh, the reason is that um, for each minima within the image, a region is created. And on this image on the right, um, each white yellow dot corresponds to the position of a regional minima. And uh, due to the noise within the image, uh, we have many minima, minima and hence a lot of regions. So we need to uh, select the interesting minima. Um, okay, so we can have a small demonstration. Up, oh, okay. Um, yeah, still have. Uh, the image of the, of the cells uh, I have used before. And uh, if we use a classic uh, watershed on this image without mask and using the other uh, parameters as default, uh, this is the kind of result we obtain. We can change uh, the visualization by applying color map. Okay, so this is too many minima. Um, 
Okay. Uh, so a first possibility to uh, improve the quality of the segmentation is to manually uh, select the minima. So for this, we uh, generate marker image uh, with uh, uh, where different regions correspond to the uh, initial uh, position of the minima that we start the flooding process and uh, compose with the original image image to remove all the other minima. Um, it may be used uh, uh, manually, so I will demonstrate it now. Uh, starting with this image, creating a marker image with the same size. And then we have to uh, manually select uh, the different markers we want to keep. So I will basically create markers uh, inside every dark region within the image. Okay. Uh, propagate the marker inside of the uh, marker image and draw them on the image. Okay. And then we can use uh, uh, in the segmentation menu of the morphology plugin, uh, marker controlled watershed. Uh, we select, okay, try not to miss them. Um, this one and the last marker image. Okay, and we have a result that is very similar to the one uh, given on, on the slide. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is a manual selection of the, of the, of the minima, but for um, larger images or for uh, more complicated images, it may be very tedious. So it would be nice to have an automated way to select the, the minima within the image. So the first possibility is to apply a strong filtering on the input image, like um, median filtering or that will merge a neighbor minima. But in using this kind of filtering, usually we also uh, have an impact on the, um, uh, right, uh, the brightness of the, uh, of the cell walls here. And it will be more difficult to, uh, to keep the boundaries of the original region. So another possibility is to use the extended minima. So for this, we first go, need to go back to the notion of uh, region and uh, local minima and local maxima. So um, yeah, if we consider regional maxima, for example, um, they can be defined by a set of connected pixels with the same value, such that all the pixels around these regions have a value which that is lower than the uh, value in the maxima. And uh, in a typical image, Oops, sorry. In a typical image, there are a lot of uh, small uh, minima. And what we want is to be more um, strict, to be less strict, and uh, to use a tolerance value and consider uh, in the regions all the pixels whose value is uh, as a difference with the largest value in the maxima that is smaller than the uh, tolerance we have chosen. For the extended uh, minima, this is the same principle, but we will consider um, regional extreme, uh, extended minima as uh, regions whose values are uh, close enough up to the tolerance value uh, from the uh, smaller value within the region. And when we apply it for the watershed, it, it consists in uh, considering only the local uh, minima whose uh, difference between the bottom and the nearest crest is uh, at least uh, the, the value of the tolerance. Okay, so when we, and this is uh, implemented uh, directly in a graphical user interface uh, in 2D, 
and that was both for 2D and 3D images. So it's not to switch to a, a 3D demo. Just make some cleanup. Okay. I will open a 3D image of an embryo of uh, a plant embryo, Arabidopsis thaliana. So this is a grayscale image that shows different cells. These are the embryo cells and the suspensor cells here. And uh, to study the development of the embryo, uh, it's necessary to identify the regions corresponding to different cells within the within the image. So to segment, to apply a segmentation to this, we use a morphological segmentation uh, plugin in the segmentation menu of MorphologyJet. This opens a new uh, graphical user interface. And if we run it directly, um, in some cases, it appears that, um, okay, it works not that bad. We may want to try to better separate some regions and if we want to, uh, if we increase the value of the tolerance we use, uh, then there will be, uh, so more regions will be merged and there will be uh, not enough regions uh, compared to what we want. On the contrary, if we have a value that is too small, okay, then we have uh, too many regions uh, that doesn't correspond to the real, to, to the expected value as well. Okay, and okay, so a nice a compromise could be uh, this one. Uh, to facilitate the visualization, it is possible to uh, change the visualization and overlay the result of the watershed uh, limits or the dams and uh, superpose with the original grayscale image. In that case, in that way, it's, it may be easier to, to apprehend the quality of the segmentation result. And another way to uh, visualize is to have clear, uh, uh, to, to, to create an image of the, of the, of the label regions um, corresponding to the, to the final segmentation. Um, there are some additional options. Um, we can choose to compute or not the boundaries between uh, the watershed. So it will make disappear the small uh, lines between the regions. And we can change also the connectivity uh, that consists in changing the way the neighbor pixels or voxels are considered. So in 3D, we can consider either the six orthogonal neighbors or using 26 neighbors. So we consider also the diagonals, the, di the voxels in diagonal. Okay, um, we just use the dams and run again, fine. And then we can uh, create a result image. Okay, um, so from now, um, it may be useful to, um, to clean up the, the result of a segmentation. And for this, we also have some um, different tools in MorphologJ. They are in uh, label images menu. So it's possible to, uh, to remove uh, the regions that touches the border of the image, to uh, replace the value of different labels to, to merge uh, adjacent labels, or to extract a specific label to create a new binary image from it. Um, most of them are integrated into another plugin, so the label edition plugin. Uh, consists in uh, representing the result of the segmentation and um, to, to give access to different edition options. So for example, if you want to remove the largest regions that correspond to the background, uh, then we make it disappear. And there are also some small regions in the bottom part of the image. So for this, we need to uh, select them and remove the selected regions. I think there is another one somewhere. Yes. 
Okay. And then the result image can be uh, generated by closing the plugin. And now the good point on when having um, an image with regions uh, with a black background uh, everywhere is that it's possible to visualize it in 3D. And so before visualizing, it's better to usually to compare it to a color image and then to generate, um, and then it's possible to generate the uh, 3D view using, the, for example, the 3D viewer. Okay. And then we have a nice uh, representation uh, of the labels. Okay, sometimes it may be frustrating not to be able to uh, have a look uh, inside of the labels. So it's uh, we also have some options to expand the position of the different regions within the image to make it easier to visualize uh, inside of the of the three D image. Um, so I just edit again. Okay. And then it simply consists in uh, moving the relative position of the different levels. Um, this one. Okay. Um, so we have just added some space in between adjacent regions to make it to make them easier to visualize. So and again, if we convert to color and uh, visualize in 3D, okay, so now it's possible to have some uh, uh, to explore uh, what's going on uh, inside of the uh, of the set of cells of the embryo. Okay, I will come back to the presentation now. Oh, yeah, please. All right, so this was the main plugin for the morphological segmentation. Um, I also presented the different options we have so for the post-processing operations for the editions of the labels. Um, some, um, so okay, some more talks on watershed is um, usually, so in main, uh, in the literature, when we speak about watershed, we speak about the segmentation of an object that is uh, contrasted, a bright object over a dark background, or the contrary, a uh, dark object over a bright background bright background. In that case, the uh, strategy is to first compute uh, an image of the gradient of the image and apply the watershed on the gradient of the image. And we have the choice for the gradient, can be linear or can be a morphological gradient. And in the regions, we obtain correspond to the, uh, to the, to the regions uh, separated depending on their contrast. Um, a typical watershed workflow is therefore as follows. From original image, we apply, uh, we can apply morphological, so different uh, filtering option to increase the quality of image. So watershed uh, segmentation can uh, result in a label, uh, an image of the labels, the, the label map image. Then the label edition plugins uh, results in a label map with uh, only the interested the regions of interest, and then applying different uh, analysis tools. I will present just uh, after. Uh, we can combine with the original label image to generate a parametric uh, map of the uh, morphometric features of the regions within the image. Just to, to finish, there is also a watershed option in image A. Um, in fact, it's um, uh, an agglomeration of different tools that consist uh, from an image of uh, uh, grains that uh, touches each other. Um, that, uh, 
that apply the watershed, but after different steps. So first, there is a distance map is computed. So for each pixels in the regions, we compute the distance to the closest background uh, pixels or voxel. We compute the inverse of the distance map, and then the high value correspond to the uh, regions that are uh, between uh, the dark spots. So applying the watershed on the inverse of the distance map result in uh, lines that can be combined with the original uh, image to obtain an image of uh, objects where the um, objects are separated according to a convexity criterion. Okay, so to summarize on watershed, I think there is a missing image. Yes, it's a generic uh, algorithm, so it can be used to segment um, uh, cells in the tissue images. It can be also used to segment objects based on the contrast, and in uh, images it's also uh, used to separate uh, particles that uh, are close uh, to each other. Um, I have presented different ways to uh, manage the over segmentation problems. It can be done either manually by selecting the markers, or it can be done by applying um, algorithmic strategy for automatically computing the um, interesting uh, minima within the image. And also, um, we have a, a label edition plugin for uh, increasing the, the quality of the resulting segmentation. OK, so this is uh, the end of the segmentation part. So maybe I have some time for, for questions, if you need. Yes, there are some questions as well. Um, let me go through them. Um, one is saying from Andrea is saying, is morphological segmentation able to segment overlap objects with a defined shape? For example, road shape cells one on top of each other. No, it is not. Sorry. <laughs> uh, now it's a very, uh, uh, yeah, it's a very common problem. Um, now there is no tool actually in MorphoLibJ uh, to, 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 to do it. And uh, I think it's still a complicated problem in general. If I can add to that, I would say that if you somehow manage to find the right markers, then you can use the marker control version uh, that we have for water set ah. to do that, but the border is usually not going to be in the right place. Yes, yes. So, yes, yeah, the, the problem is if we have different cells that overlap, uh, then the boundary of some of the objects may disappear, and uh, it would be difficult to extract the boundary of the objects that is uh, behind another one. And we have another question that is actually a redundant one that we keep having, and I forgot to tell you before. It's, people are asking how to install or how to get this Morpholy J Plus plugins that you are showing, how to install ah. them. Yes, uh, I, yeah, I didn't mention it in the beginning. Actually, uh, the principle is to connect to the uh, GitHub to go to the plugin to download the file, so they save as, and then um, you need to save this file into the plugins directory of your, of your image J installation. So uh, it's highly dependent on uh, your installation. Uh, but typically, if I find it, OK, so in a typical uh, image installation, there is the ig.jar and a plugins directory in which all the jar files corresponding to the plugins are located. So here there is a morphology uh, library, some uh, yes, directional filters, and um, I don't think that's all. And the reconstruction, the demonstration plugins. OK. In uh, Fiji, it's much more integrated. But for experimental plugins, it's a little bit more uh, manual way for installing. 
Okay, we have another question regarding morphological segmentation. It yes. says that if we are able to uh, overlay the result with the original image with, uh, and then change the opacity in 3D. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I got the, the, the questions, but um, okay, once we have the um, image the, the result of the segmentation, it is possible to, to generate a binary mask. And we can combine this image with the original image to uh, make a crop, a selected crop of the original image. So, no, I mean, I, I think the question was if we could over, uh, overlay the labels on, the, on top of the original image and then change the opacity. I think the opacity is fixed because ah. one of the options, the display options, is, uh, is actually to do that. Ah, if, if okay. You have to open somewhere. Yeah, there, yeah. You can open it. Yeah, um, okay, with this, no. This one, okay. Mm. Yeah, it, it should be possible. It is not implemented, but it should be easy to add. Oh, okay. Yeah, add I think it, it is 50% of uh, opacity or something right now, but yeah. I don't remember, but um, okay. Could be possible to 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 have this as additional option easily. One last question: People are asking, okay, if we can use, for example, directional filtering to close in images like that, uh, membranes that are nearby but that they have some gaps, even though maybe the the membrane is a little bit diffuse. Uh, Yes, <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, now, um, for 2D images, um, I would say yes, because it's possible to use uh, morphological filtering um, and to, to apply, um, yes, to, to, to improve the quality of the membrane on the sections. So, uh, but in 3D, it is, um, not so easy to apply directly as is a, a possible way to do it could be to iterate on the different slices and for each slice to apply uh, directional filtering to improve the quality of the membranes on the current slice and then create the resulting 3D image that uh, concatenates the several uh, enhanced images. Um, yeah, a, a better way would be to, to, to have a 3D directional filtering approach uh, that we can do on the, on the to-do list. <laughs> okay, I think that's it for now. Okay. So let's continue. Um, okay. Uh, so the last part will be about uh, analysis of the different, um, uh, yes, of the segmented images. So I have two topics in it, uh, so three in fact. Uh, once we have a segmentation of the images, um, there are different ways to extract quantitative features from this uh, segmented images. A, a classical way is to apply um, analysis of the morphometry of the regions and extract it um, Morphometric features like the area, the perimeters, uh, or error number, and so on. Uh, in some cases, uh, it may be interesting also to uh, study the relative position of the object each, each other and to study the, uh, how they are organized together. And the uh, third possibility we have with mathematical morphology is also to apply some texture analysis tools. And in that case, it's um, granulometry analysis. So I will detail them. Um, in two dimension images, uh, it's possible to extract uh, a variety of uh, morphological uh, features. Uh, most common ones are area perimeters. Uh, based on inertia, uh, based on the in inertia parameters, it is possible to extract, to generate an ellipse uh, which shares the same moments as the original regions. Popular parameters are also the ferry diameters, 
or a related one is a, a oriented box with a minimum area. And we have also uh, defined in morphology some geodesic diameters that correspond to the largest path we can uh, draw within the particle. Based on these uh, parameters that describe um, mostly the shape, the size of the, of the regions, it is possible to compute shape indices that correspond in general to ratios of uh, size parameters. And uh, for example, the elongation parameters correspond to the ratio of the length of the two ellipsoids, as the, the two axes of the ellipse. Um, in, I was speaking about the geodesic diameter. It's um, maybe one original parameters in uh, morphology. So um, the concept of geodesy consists in um, from two points within the regions to define a path uh, between them. A geodesic path will be uh, the path with a minimum length that will join these two points, but still uh, staying within the regions. And the geodesic diameter will be uh, the length of the geodesic path, uh, the largest, uh, the length of the largest geodesic path within the region. So here it corresponds to the two geodesic extremum within uh, this region. Then based on the geodesic diameter, it is also possible to compute derived uh, shape indices. Uh, so like the geodesic elongation that correspond to the ratio of the geodesic diameter over um, the size of the inscribed circle or inscribed disk. The shape factor uh, may be also derived by combining with the area. Or, um, another one is the torque curiosity that correspond to the ratio of the geodesic diameter over the maximum ferrite diameter. And in that case, um, uh, it corresponds a little uh, roughly to the, the complexity of the shape with a high tortuosity. We have a very complex shape where we need to have a lot of um, circumvolution to reach another extremity within the, the region. Okay. Uh, the new feature in the last version of morphology is it's possible to quickly compute the um, thickness, the average thickness of the um, of, of a region. So the principle is simply to extract the skeleton in one side, to compute the distance map of the pixels within the particles on the other side, and then to compute the values of the distance map uh, for each pixels of the skeleton. Um, can be uh, made manually by applying distance map and skeleton, um, but it's a little bit tedious. And uh, so now it can be uh, computed uh, directly with morphology. And also we have different um, equivalent features for the 3D regions. Um, the volume and the surface area are the direct uh, equivalent of the area and perimeter in 2D. Uh, it's also possible to compute an equivalent ellipsoid. Um, and in that case, we have different, uh, so we have three sizes, so three radius, and uh, three orientations to, to, to identify how it is oriented within space. We also have a geodesic diameter and a computation of geodesic of the inspired ball. Um, depend, uh, we can also have some option to compute some shapes, factors. And we also have some um, tools to colorize uh, the 3D uh, regions within the label image uh, according to uh, one column of the results table. So for example, it's possible to uh, colorize according to a um, shape index corresponding to the ratio of two ellipsoid radiuses. Yeah. Something I wanted to, to mention is that um, it's not always easy to have a, a good way to measure the, um, the morphometry of the, of the regions. And there are two uh, problems that can arise. Uh, first, the, um, the measure we have uh, doesn't correspond to the uh, actual value we want to measure. So we can have a bias in, in the measurement. And in second um, problem is that um, due to the discretization, and the resolution of the and the limited resolution of the image, we may also have some uh, uh, dispersion of the values we measure 
even for um, if we measure the same object with different orientation and different position. So um, something it is necessary. So something we 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 care about a lot was to to provide some uh, measurements that correspond to uh, values that are as close as possible as the expected value. So one example is for the surface area. Um, um, a typical uh, so the, the first idea that comes to measuring the surface area is to generate an ISO surface and then generate the um, uh, to compute the surface area by computing the sum of the surfaces of each triangle into the in the surface mesh. In fact, this um, method is very so when we generate synthetic shapes with known surface area and measure the surface area using this method of ISO surface, we obtain we have a large bias. And the better method is to um, measure surface area using uh, different methods. So in morphology, we have used a um, method based on uh, computing intercept with uh, families of lines of different orientations. And in general, it gives better results than, uh, um, than uh, using other surface method. Um, OK. Um, another family of tools uh, was uh, yeah, to, to, to better have insight on the um, relative organization of the of regions and typically in uh, cellular morphology. Uh, we are very interested in knowing the morphology not only on the on the cells but also of the neighbors of the cells. So um, there is a region adjacency graph tool in uh, morphology that provides um, a list of links between adjacent regions. Uh, we can show them quickly. If we start from a segmented image here, that is not the color one. Okay. Let's just remove the border labels. Okay. And when we analyze, we have the region adjacency graph. We have a list of pairs of labels that correspond to adjacent regions. So here, for example, we have the number 16 uh, that should be a neighbor of the number 20. and Yes, we, we find it on, on the list. So um, then we have one way to uh, go into the analysis of the neighborhood of the of the regions. Even if uh, if we want to go further in the analysis, um, it's better to use a scripting or more uh, to develop its own plugin to to be able to to have a good. Um, to go to go to really go further into the interpretation. Okay, and then the last uh, kind of analysis we can apply with uh, mathematical morphology is uh, texture texture analysis. So um, the plugin is not uh, directly included into MorphologyJ, but um, it's uh, an additional plugin that requires morphology to be. Uh, Applied. You can find it on uh, GitHub as well. So uh, the IG Tools uh, account and IG Granulometry plugin. It should be rather easy to find. And the principle is um, simply to apply uh, morphological filters with increasing size of structuring elements. So when we apply a morphological closing with a given uh, radius, we will make disappear the dark regions that correspond here to the cells. Um, so we make disappear the dark regions that are smaller than the structuring element. Then by increasing the radius of the structuring element, we will make disappear uh, larger and larger cells. So the idea is to measure the quantity of cells that disappear between two uh, sizes of structuring elements. And for this, we built um, uh, a 
curve that correspond to the sum of the gray levels within the image, depending on the size of the structuring element. So this curve uh, reaches uh, a plateau at some, after some uh, number of iterations. And when we compute the derivative of this curve, we obtain uh, a, a granulometric curve that corresponds to a, a size distribution of the cells um, within the original image. And um, that takes into account the, um, the gray levels of the, of the image. So it's um, interesting because it can be an alternative to the analysis of the cellular morphology of a tissue when it is not possible to have a precise segmentation of the different regions within the image. And here is an example on two uh, slices of uh, uh, it's tomato perica images. So um, the upper image, use the pointer. Yes, so the upper image uh, is characterized by a large proportion of very small cells. And uh, on the red curve, we observe that the majority of the cells correspond to small sizes. On the contrary, the image on the bottom has a larger proportion of large cells, but also the, um, uh, the, uh, the cells have a large viability in, the, in their size, they are small, medium size, and large cells. And so we have uh, the blue curve correspond to a larger distribution of the, of the cell sizes within the image. OK. And so from in granulometric curves, it, it is possible to obtain uh, afterwards an average size of the uh, regions depending on the granulometric curves within the image. OK. Um, start to reach the end of the talk. I just have some um, summary remarks on morphology. So it's a collection of plugins for filtering, for segmentation, or for analysis of images. And um, yeah, it's rather rich at the moment, but uh, maybe one of the diff difficulty, it's a do-it-yourself library. So it's not totally integrated. You have to take uh, different elements of the, um, of the workflow and uh, adapt each one and create your own workflow uh, using the different components in, in the library. Um, that's why we have also tried to make it more, to make it easily uh, adaptable to, 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 the other, to the use by others. So um, it can be used um, as well as, a, as so in macro. So uh, when using the macro recorder, uh, it's easy to, to rerun uh, a plugin just by copying the, the, the result uh, given, given in the history. But uh, if you go a little bit, um, so if you explore a little bit um, the documentation of the, of the source code, it is also possible to be sometimes more efficient by directly calling some, uh, some, class, some static classes. And in that case, you can, get, uh, you can avoid using the graphical user interface and uh, improve a little bit the, uh, the speed of the, of the processing speed. And um, if you want to go really more deep into the library, it's also possible to, um, uh, to extract the algorithms that, uh, that apply the operations. And in, in some cases, it is also possible to uh, set up directly some additional parameters. Uh, typically, if you want to monitor the, uh, the execution of the algorithms, um, it's, uh, it may be more convenient to, to manipulate uh, the algorithm class results are uh, using um, a simple call to the plugin. Okay, so uh, I'm ready. I gave some uh, references at the end, and if you have some questions, I still have, still have some time. We do have questions. So, okay. <laughs> one that a couple of uh, persons uh, ask is um, if it is possible to compute the average thickness in 3D, or if there is any thinking about implementing the average thickness uh, in 3D? Uh, not yet. So, um, <laughs> I have implemented it in 2D for the moment, but um, 
as there is a skeletonization algorithm in 3D and as there is a distance map in 3D, it is possible to compute it in 3D. Uh, so at the moment, there is no direct uh, plugin to do it, but it's still anyway it's possible to do it manually by uh, first creating the skeleton, second generating the distance map, and uh, then combining the distance map and the skeleton to compute the average uh, only for the voxels containing the skeleton. Yeah, so I do. I do believe. Completed. I do believe that in the in the forum, I have answered this question with the script or something to, to okay. exactly that. Okay, we have another question uh, regarding the materials. If uh, under which license they are, if it is okay to reuse the training material and republish it, and of course with full acknowledgement and, and you and your authors. Yes, uh, there is no license yet, but uh, they can be reused. Uh, most of the time it's um, material that have been already published, so uh, it's possible to, to reuse them, yes. I have okay. this, um, in the, uh, where is it? Uh, I have put some, um, yeah, some references of the papers when they were uh, used for given, um, when they were published, I tried to give the, um, the reference paper. Mm -hmm. And one other question is, um, is there a a way of calculating through mathematical morphology these uh, granulometric curves in uh, 3D images? Yes, uh, <laughs> again, it is not yet implemented, but uh, in theory, there is no, no difficulty in doing this. Um, as far as uh, morphological opening or closing are defined for 3D, and they are defined in 3D in morphology, then it is possible to compute the granulometry in 3D for, for 3D images as well. Um, so we have integrated plugins for the 2D images, but um, it is possible to make a macro that uh, so that iterates over different sizes of the plugin elements and compute um, granulometry. But okay, so I didn't have the opportunity to to apply it, so I didn't yet implement it. Implemented it. There is actually a very interesting question regarding the disparity of resolution usually in microscopy images in X, Y, and, and the Z direction. So they're asking how do we uh, work with this and how do we adapt our structuring elements for that? Oh. Um. Okay. Um, when you apply filters, some morphological filters, uh, it is possible to specify different radius uh, given the direction. So if, for example, the uh, resolution in Z direction is uh, three times the resolution in the X and Y direction, it's possible to use a radius equal to two in the x and y direction and equal to six, oh no, equal to one third of two. Okay, so to, to adapt it, but manually. So there is no, oh, to say it differently, the um, resolution, the size of the structuring element is given in pixels or in voxels. So if you want to take care, take into account the spatial calibration of the image, it is, the responsibility of the user to convert the relative size of the tracking element to match the, diff the, the ratio of differences of resolution within the 3D image. It's um, actually the question is a very, so I also ask the question very often when I process images because sometimes we want to uh, uh, give the size as a number of pixels or voxels because we are closer to the way the data are stored. But when we want to interpret, we want to have the size as microns or millimeters or something else. But uh, it better corresponds to the way we interpret the images. So um, yeah, it, it may also be a, an opportunity of improvement as a, 
of the plugins is to to give to specify the sizes as a user unit rather than in as pixels. So this is maybe a, a good moment to clarify if the results uh, that appear in the uh, all our analysis tools they are in in which units? Ah, yeah, um, th they are when when the image has a spatial calibration, the um, image analysis tools take care to take into account this spatial calibration. So if your image is in micron, the diameter or the geodesic diameter is in microns as well. And the surface area will be in square microns and the volume will be in cubic microns. So yes, the spatial calibration is taken into account. Okay, I think uh, we are done then. There's no no more questions there. Someone else wants to add something? Otherwise, thank you so much, David, for the very nice work. Thank you for managing the question and the and the logistic. That was great. It was very good, David. Thank you. Thank you. I hope the assistant also <laughs> enjoyed and could learn things. So just to clarify, all the questions will be posted with the respective answers as a post in the in the forum. Okay. So you you have later you think of questions that you forgot to ask. You can also post them there, and all of us we could answer them. Okay. Thank you so much for your participation.